Definitely all killer, no filler. Hello fellow fellers and welcome to Fan Scene and today I have for you my review of In Search of Darkness Part 2 directed by David Weiner with the returning cast from the first film and with new additions in the form of Leanna Quigley, Robert England, the man himself, Tom Savini, Chris Jericho, and Clancy Brown. Uh, this four and a half hour uh, documentary uh, is the follow up to the first In Search of Darkness which was probably one of my all time favorite documentaries of all time and with this documentary uh, the sequel doc, it's it, it's it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Uh, it gives you such a deep dive into not only the classics of eighty horror, but also the cult classics, uh, the video nasties as they were called, uh, Italian horror, and even some Japanese horror. And from the start of this film, from the opening montage, it goes straight for the jugular, and it doesn't let go. Right into the opening title card, and on into the interviews, and from nineteen eighty to 1989 it is just so entertaining and so interesting and so informative do you ever wonder about the different ways of dying you know violently nostalgia plays such a heavy part in you know what you grow up with the thing about horror that i really really loved it was just kind of counterculture fuck you attitude it was something that your parents hated Sex, drugs, and rock and roll in the 80s, right? Well, it became a lot more than that. We were rock stars in the 80s. We were busier than we'd ever been. The amount of horror movies that came out in the 80s was enormous. The output was insane worldwide. Horror films really did open the floodgates. Horror, splatter, gore. Great Grand Guignol. A horror stew. Why did it affect me so strongly? I mean, it really changed everything. A good horror film can be scary, but it can also make you laugh. It just picked something in my brain. You're taking on this wild ride emotionally. You're being terrified. You're laughing. They relax you. They make you laugh. Then they scare you again. I'm a scary cat. When I see a good horror movie, the first thing I want to do when I get out of there is I want to fight or fuck. <laughs> I look now at the 80s, there's never gonna be another time like it. That's for damn sure. Hey kids, welcome to prime time. As they go year by year, uh, they take certain breaks uh, in between where they do like these almost like little mini documentaries like where they talk about the children in horror movies or uh, the fandom of horror movies. But my three favorite like little mini documentaries in between were Tom Savini on Tom Savini, Leanna Quigley on Leanna Quigley, and Robert England on Robert England. Those three little like mini documentaries were just uh, awesome. For lack of a better word, they was awesome. To hear Tom Savini's story of you know how he came up and how he learned the craft and uh, how he's actually a fan of less is more and he's like like considered the king of splatter. And, you know, he likes, you know, he prefers less more. And how he was a fan of, like, the old 50s Universal Horror Monster movies, which I'm a huge fan of, too. And I absolutely love that. And then, like, with Leanna Quigley, I think most people just think of her in horror. Well, not not most people, but, like, maybe people that's not, like, full into horror. Think of her like this hot blonde in these old 80s horror movies that tends to get naked. But she's so much more, so much more. To hear her story of how she got started in the business and how comfortable she is with herself and uh, how strong she is and just was so interesting. I have a, so much more new found respect for Leanna Quigley. She was awesome. Uh, I just absolutely loved her little mini doc they, they had of her. And Robert England, what can be said? I mean, Robert England, Freddy Krueger, the man himself. Uh, it was so interesting to hear his story how uh, he was okay if he was going to be typecast because he had uh, already paid his dues. He'd come up. He was a trained Shakespearean actor. He had done uh, character work in all kinds of movies with big stars. He did TV work. He was in V. And, uh, you know, then he became Freddy and it just he was off. And uh, he talked about his directorial debut of 976 Evil and what it what it went through to have that be made and uh and how you know he's kind of lumped into this 
box of horror and if he was left to his own devices uh, to make what he wanted to make, he would make a movie like Tender Mercies, which is an Oscar uh, winning movie by uh, starring Robert Duvall. And I couldn't help but wondering uh, how many movies uh, by Robert England could we have got of that caliber if... Uh, he, he, if he still wanted to direct. The 80s was the splatter decade. That was my decade, you know. Uh, I was called the Sultan of Splatter, the Wizard of Gore. It was the one-two punch of Dawn of the Dead and then Friday the 13th that catapulted my career. You know, it's important for film students, let's say, to study films from the past. If you're surrounded by people like I am with uh, students coming into my school, and they don't know who Boris Karloff is. You're deprived. I mean, if you're gonna be a makeup artist, you know, do some research on some of the greatest monsters or creatures or makeups that were ever created, you know. The first sentence in my book on makeup effects is, the more you do, the more you get to do. That's the thrill of creativity. That idea of taking a blob of clay or taking a blank page, you're giving life to something that never existed and that that's thrilling. I thought in a million years when I was growing up in Davenport, Iowa, that I would be acting because I was probably the shyest person on the face of the earth. I remember my first role that I got that was a speaking role, even though it wasn't a lot of speaking, was Fairy Tales. And that was with Charlie Band. I was so proud. I remember writing in my diary, I'm a big star. I think I found my niche in doing the ones that were, I hate to say low budget. What is this Midnight Wimp Bowling League? What are you, the Bride of Dracula? I think there was a lot more freedom in doing things then, and I just liked it. It was a lot more fun. I made up in my mind, if I have to show my breasts, I'm gonna get more money. So I was the go-to girl. The more you draw attention to being naked, the worse it is. If you just take it very casually, people don't notice. It's like when it's the person that's like going, oh, don't look, oh, you can't see me, oh, I'm so embarrassed, that you want to look at. So I would just be like very casual about it and people didn't make a big deal. You know, so it's like, it's not a big thing. I know what you're doing when you're watching my movies. <laughs> just how many calories do you think that burns? I think horror changed a lot when we were in people's living rooms. I think that people got to know you better. They could go seek you out in a video store and say, oh, you know, I really like that person. Do you have another movie by her or him? Or, you know, is there another part two or part three? It's a way to really get into someone's heart. I am eternal. Freddie's personality was being quoted by Johnny Carson. It was in Mad Magazine, it was in the funny papers, it was being merchandised. When you become that part of the culture, you follow it a little bit. So the franchise exploited Freddie's sense of humor. Second helping! And a kind of almost surreal, subconscious, dreamlike sense of fun and revenge that Freddie was going through with the culture at the same time. I didn't suffer the curse of typecasting, or, and, 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 and when I did, I, I was prepared for it. I wasn't gonna be surprised by it, and I'd already proved myself. How England doesn't direct more film is because people aren't asking me to direct the films that I'm right for. Left to my own devices, I'm the guy that should be directing Tender Mercies. That's the kind of film I would do the best. Like I mentioned earlier, they do such a deep dive into these. So many uh, cult classics that I have not heard of. Like with the first movie, I came out uh, with a list of horror movies that I've not seen. But with this movie, this sequel, uh, there were so many, so many more movies that I had not heard of in my life. My list for this one is so much longer of movies I want to watch. And uh, they do a real, like you know, real in-depth into Italian horror and to hear about Italian horror, which I, I've only ever seen one Italian horror movie. I know I'm a novice in this apartment. It was Demons and uh, Lumberto Bravo's Dario Argento's uh, Demani, Demons. Uh, it was it was a great movie and now I'm interested to see it some more Italian horror uh, because 
their movies are so much different than uh, what the Americans were making in the 80s, uh, but yet so similar. And uh, it's like mentioned at one point by Gerda Gerda, who is in Demons, that uh, people always tell her that Italian horror movies are crazy. They make no sense. And she says, well, yes, they do make sense because it's made for their culture, not ours. And there's and they talk about how in these Italian horror movies by Dario Genta, uh, Lamberto, Lamberto Bava, and so many others that they do a lot of stuff with the eyes, you know, like eyes popping out, eyes being gouged out, uh, looking to the eyes because uh, the eyes are the windows of the soul. If you, as I did in the 80s, walked into a movie theater and didn't know you were walking into an Italian horror movie, you were kind of caught wondering what the hell you just walked into. The three titans of Italian cinema were Lumberto Bava, Lucio Fulci, and of course Dario Argento. The Italians just went there immediately. <laughs> they said, boom. What's more horrifying than to be stabbed in the eye? <laughs> <laughs> They're into eyeballs, a lot of eyeballs. You would pick up a movie at the video store, you never knew what experience you were in for, and that was the fun of it. This sequel documentary to me was, uh, just uh, brilliant, as I said earlier. Uh, I give a kudos and shout outs to, uh, you know, director David Wiener, creator VC, Robin Block CEO, uh, and all the cast and crew and everybody involved in this project because it was, it was truly, truly intriguing and interesting and a great sequel. And uh, I big shout out to Andrew Hawkins. Uh, thanks, man, uh, for bringing me in because I am uh, sort of a part of this. A documentary. My name is in the credits as an affiliate and I backed this project and uh, it was just Andrew Hawkins, thank you man, you reached out uh, I, when I did my Search of Tomorrow trailer reaction and uh, you brought me along on this trip and I thank you for that and I thank you David Wiener for this movie because uh, much like 80s horror I could watch a million <laughs> of these sequels about 80s horror because there's just so much to talk about like uh, actor Bill Mosley from you know Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, The Devil's Rejects you know he says that he could talk about 80s horror all day uh, so could I I could watch people talk about it because it's just such a great decade for not only just like horror movies but I mean like horror thrived in 80s but for, like sci-fi uh, comedy action it was just so great such a great decade and this documentary I absolutely loved it Thank you guys. I'm in this one. The 80s was the splatter decade. That was my decade. There was something really dark and sexy and strange. Crazy stuff. It's like a roller coaster ride. People love this stuff. There really was a shift of a whole new generation of monster makers. That was so clever and creative. We were rock stars in the 80s. Tom Savini came to us and said, I want to cut somebody's head off. I was called the Sultan of Splatter, the Wizard of Gore. I think it's one of the finest ways of murdering someone. How could you let me watch that? It was something that your parents hated. That was one of the attractions of it. It is just a shredder. The essence of sex and violence. It never ceases to amaze me. I just couldn't get enough. I remember having to stop it because it was getting so rattled. That's an image that I'll never forget. Ooh. Gives me chills thinking about it. In the comment section down below, let me know some of your favorite 80s horror. Let me know what you thought about this review because I really do want to know what you guys think about this. And if you like this video, please give it a like. If you did not like this video, you can go ahead and give it a dislike. That's up to you guys. No hurt feelings here. Share the video out for everybody to see. And please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications. I would truly appreciate it. I really hope I earned your subscription uh, because, you know, that, that would be awesome. That, I truly appreciate everybody who subscribes to me. You guys are wonderful. Uh, Wherever you are, have a great, safe, happy, healthy day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. I thank you for watching, and Godspeed.